So, thanks for joining us again here at levelupyourgame.net. I'm Disrepute, joined by Vor Zenatorium versus Four Kings. We're on to the third map now, Realm of Steel Rats. It's one map apiece in this clan-based Euro Cup Group A match. It's the second match week. XT coming on the back of a defeat, and uh, 4K coming on the back of a win, Vor. We've seen two brilliant maps, Dreadful Place, and then Grim Dungeons. Realm of Steel Rats, who's going to take it, Bob? Well, I think this will be close, because I believe both teams are pretty strong on this map. And I think this is sort of a map that favours the play style of both teams. They're both very team play based, team oriented teams. They don't rely on like, individuals running around with. I can hear. Sorry, get distracted by a dog barking. <laughs> hey, don't talk about my mother like that. But yeah, this will be a good match for both teams. Similar styles, I expect that both players the same way, both look to take control of that red and LG of course. And with strong team play, they should both be setting up quad quite well. And I think that is what this map will come down to, who can take advantage of the quads best. Yeah, I mean, Realm of Steel Rats is uh, famed, it's an old Quake 3 map, CPM4 for not having the railgun and it's been voted one of the favourite TDM maps back in the past it, yeah, it was the, the map everybody loved but I think the main reason is because you didn't have rail and it just gives a different type of gameplay from any other map out there yeah it does but it focuses the game so heavily on that LG now and we can see the games on it still but you know most of the action is going to take place in that LG so in red area. Teams FRS, Provi, Purian, Wit, Creaser, Iyoko, DK, and Dibby. Go okay, four kings versus Zenatorium. And we're following Yoko to start. He's got the yellow armor straight off the bat, but he's only got grenades. And that's really quite irritating when you've got some armor. You want to be out there doing damage. You want a weapon, and grenades are really quite a defensive tool. Yeah, I'm lucky that he one. couldn't hit any there. I mean, just one grenade would be a major advantage if had he hit one. But he doesn't have any left to defend this quad with. We don't have a quad time, but now is the time to sort of begin to look setting it up. Yoko's ridiculously laggy, so it's not really the stream. I apologise every time we're on his point of view. It's his connection. Yoko! <laughs> Would be the one to grab the quad as well, wouldn't he? Using that machine gun. Oh my god. Don't know how that rocket didn't hit him. The yellow armor, too tempting. Drops down for it, but of course that puts you well off track of getting to the yellow LG area. Favorite nade launcher in hand. If you can get some quad nades. Oh, it thank you very much. Good. Shotgun in hand. And let's get down into this key location of the railgun. There's FRS hitting a nade. Rockets from behind. He doesn't even blink. Quad has run down. Finds himself with no help though. If he can hit some nades, that'll be useful to his team, but he should be going down any moment here. I've never seen a player have so so many nades at the start of a the game. There we go, Provipov now. Getting that machine gun killed. And he does a fair bit of damage there with the rockets. That could put Hawkins in a bad position if his team can move in. It's I would say once it. again though that Four Kings have made a strong start to the map. There must be a secret to that ball. How does how do they do that against every team? I mean, we've seen them do it against teams like Fnatic. I think, knowing exactly what to do from the start, with everyone being just totally sure of what they're doing. Of course, there are set locations where well, the, the spawns are in fixed locations. You don't know where you're going to spawn randomly, but you could easily prepare. Where you go from every single spawn for the best advantage. And then have a primary location you all want to get to early on at the start of the map. Yeah, it's certainly no coincidence that they always make such a strong start to every map they play. Puri in an excellent position for quad at the moment. Palms off his rocket to a teammate, so XT in a good spot here. But this is the kind of map where you can get a last second the diver. The position probably is in is so important, that plasma spam into that teleporter. As Wick takes the quad, it's almost like a, a 
He bluffed the movement there, and that was really good play. He's got double LG pickups and lots of ammo to work with. Gets the frag, so got yellow there. armor on its spot. Get a rocket in his back. This is good play, though. This is turn out perfect at the moment. If he can get into this main area and get some frags. Oh my god. Well, he's got bizarre movement, hasn't he? Uh, eventually takes control of the red armor. So uh, there was a good quad run in the end. Didn't get as many fags as perhaps he would have wanted though. Why did he move away there? What? Completely missed out on the red. I mean, Chris just came in and jumped it. Must have not known the time, you can't assume. That was very unusual. Well, I have to say, of course, uh, when these teams are playing, they also are using communication tools like Ventrilo, like TeamSpeak, like Mumble. And sometimes you end up listening to your team and what they are saying rather than focusing fully on the game. You move to areas based on calls that might be inaccurate and sometimes it can look like on stream things really don't make sense. Yeah, and of course if someone has made a bad call and you've left the area, then it, it can be punished for it. Here we go, Puri double yellow, he's got a rocket as well. The 10 ammo, but there's the double crates spawning here, so he's got plenty of rockets to defend this quad coming up in 20 seconds. He's going to go down for this next yellow, is he again? Four seconds to wait. It's a risky move. You know, Falkins could rush in all of a sudden. Well, he's going to be tanked to the brim for this power up. Of course, he hasn't really got a weapon to take advantage. That's such good rocket play. Yoko in the back. Dibby takes him out with the shark. And you just see the power of that lightning gun there, Vor. Yeah, I mean, if you catch someone out and they don't immediately start dodging you, which obviously if you catch them out they're not going to, then you've already done so much damage. Back to DK's point of view. Especially if you get caught when you've only got a rocket launcher against a lightning gun. Now, unless you hit a perfect first rocket, then the lightning gun will pretty much always come out on top. And this map is just designed for lightning gun. I mean, look at that. Well, there you go. Perfect. That has a great rocket on Provi, actually. But Provi is just in such a perfect position. Wow, what the hell? How did he dodge that machine gun? <laughs> It's unfortunate he couldn't get away there because he could have passed off his weapons. And at the moment, you have to say that Four Kings are in quite a comfortable lead. Yeah, and this is the map. It's, it's kind of a funny map. I mean, there's no real counter attack. You can't realistically hold the yellow side of the map. They're too spread out and open to attack from the red area. And of course, if you're not getting those lightning guns, you'll be at such a disadvantage on weapons that... Now, even if your whole team was stacked on those yellows, they'd have a very hard time holding off a team with four lightning guns. So it means this uh, map is rather one-dimensional. It does mean you just have to attack that lightning gun area. Of course, there's different ways of doing that. But uh, if you haven't worked those different ways out and you only have your one solution and that's failing, then you're in big trouble, aren't you? Anyway, five seconds... Until you the can quad see that spawns. they have slowed the game down and they'll be looking to defend this quad, but I don't think they're going to find it very wow, easy. Wow, great nades from Kreisa. Love watching Kreisa so much. Such an intelligent player. DK, what a move in on that quad. That was so good from Forking. That was basically a save. A quad save, that. They, they turned up late to get position on it. XT had been setting up for a while. and Well, if you're the XT players now, you are fuming. You are so enraged by that. There's a big problem because they committed they committed to not attacking the red and the LG, to look to sit back at the yellows and defend the quad and maybe bring themselves back into the game with a good quad run, but that did not happen. Good attack from four kings and that's wasted the last two minutes of Zenatorium basically. Puri going down to a heavy shotgun blast from Dibby there. We follow it up on Puri again, no. to follow Puri just cruising these uh, low corridors and back up to quad. 
Provi in front of him. And they're going to attack in high on the red. Now, cause it's this difficult is... to attack in this way with only a shotgun and a rocket though. Uh, is he not doing any real damage with those long range shotgun blasts? If you can get a time on that red then that is a good route to take. Just diving in and stealing the red away. Debbie better be careful he doesn't get caught out by the rocketer there or the shotgun and lose that shaft. That's finally what XT need, a shaft and Wit should just back off get some ammo for it, get some health and armor because it's 30 seconds for the quad and well, Chris has just taken that last LG away from them, so I think he must be the only LG on the map now, or? Yeah, I haven't checked, but quite possibly. And right, good, he's doing a good job. Ammo with it, and he has an armor. There's more ammo, it's tempting him in a way, but 10 seconds to a quad. Ah, uh, it's fine. Here we go. 5 seconds. Needs his teammate to hit some good shots here. There's the other shaft, in fact. Oh, brilliant move again. Look at that, Carissa. DK grabs it with three. Why did he even do that? Maybe we were just looking to make sure that it wasn't picked up by XT. I mean, Wit was in a difficult position there to defend that quad. He had so many different people to choose to shoot at. Only him and one teammate there. Almost impossible to hold it off against four people coming at you all at the same time. I'd say for quad defense, it might make a lot more, a lot of sense to try and get a couple of plasmas there. Wow, look at that. Three man well, attack from 4K. On, uh, one of the earlier quad setups that Zenitoim did have perfect positions. They had someone in front of the teleporter with a plasma gun, and they had someone else watching the telly that comes out by that rocket launcher. And they managed to pick that quad up with no damage on the escape. But they haven't been able to do that since. It's going to take a lot to turn this score around. I mean, a 40 frag difference is massive. It still yeah, it is, I mean, just halfway through the map though, there's time to do it. It's taken, what, six or seven minutes of Four Kings being in pretty much full control of Red Armour area to build that lead? Are they going to have to match that if they want to come back into it? Good rockets and probably before he goes down to the spam plasma of DK. Well, I say spam, it's not really spam, is it? Suppressing fire. 25 seconds till this quad, and DK already there. His teammates, you can see, uh, are well over the LG. I mean, well, DK's just completely gone away from... Oh, look at that. Very aggressive attack. 10 seconds till the red, though. Peru's going to wait for it. It's going to be very He's close to the quad time. It's going to be difficult to get into quad. He'll have time, but he'll have to take such a direct route that... I have the slightest bit of damage on him that will force him to back away. Oh, brilliant jump there. Didn't matter in the end. Kreisa takes it. If Kreisa can survive, I mean, such an advantage here. The yellow armor's up as well. He could do with a shotgun or shaft. The health, or the health in this position's not up for him. There, there's the health just through that doorway. He's gone all the way back. <laughs> Interesting. He's not going to use the quad then. Just no, he will. Seconds, that's, yeah. fine. that's not too yeah, bad, actually. Smart. His team hasn't moved in and died, so they should be able to support him. Brilliant movement there as well from Fusa. I love the strafe jumping. Very you smooth. can see that just the presence of the quad and XT backed off without even seeing the quad. Oh, a failed jump from Provi there. Could have caused him his death, but saved by FRS. Four Kings already in the triple figure scoreline. XT, oh, well away from that. Oh great, rockets from FRS, but fails to jump! Oh god. It's just not going Zenitorium's way, unfortunately. There you go, the shaft up for Wit. He had no idea when the shaft was up. And he's dropped it. And this is the thing you can't do. If you pick up the lightning gun, can't drop it because that happens. Gets a frag, did a lot of damage. Oh, they need to drop it himself, so. I mean, it's okay to drop weapons when your teammates are in there fighting with you, but if you're on your own, which unfortunately it was, then dropping weapons is a big deal. Is it definitely going to go to the other team? Probably taking that red. We've got 15 seconds till the squad. He's got a shaft as well. This could be comeback time, maybe, or. Yeah, it will have to start now, the comeback, if there is going to be one. It's a 
50 frag deficit. They've got to start building back. Look at this. It's basically drawn. The fire in. Good work from Curry. It was a fraction too early, in all honesty. And that actually cost him in the end. But good move from him. A couple of frags out of that. As we're on Yoko Pov. Yeah, we should switch away. Yes, remember. we will. Oh, that oh. one is stuttery Pov. We're on Dibby now. My mouse keeps double clicking, so. Great plasma work. Wow. Nothing you can do against plasma when you don't have like, anything more than a machine gun in a tight area like that. You have to suggest that Dibby's one of the uh, star TDMers in the scene at the moment. Very yeah, He's active. been putting in good performances in nearly all games we've seen him in. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, Sweden national team winning that final. He's definitely played well for Four Kings from what we've seen. New recruit for them. Yeah, they, they needed a strong player like this, having lost Verb and Zik. You, know, you have to bring in players of comparable quality if you want to stay at the level you were before. I think they should have done an Arsenal and had a, a youth team for the next five years. Might not go down too well with their fans. There we go, Dibby perfect timing in for the LG as well, he's going to get a couple of frags out of this. It's very, uh, very controlled in this map, really does look like he knows what he's doing. Oh, and he's going to get some more ammo for it there. Thank you very much. Misses out on this yellow. That's really, really irritating when that kind of thing happens. He's going to go down as well. It's not cool. unlucky there. I mean, he killed probably twice. <laughs> killed him first time, spawns in front of him. Kills him again, spawns in front of him. Stole his yellow and then killed him. It's, it's like he's being punished for getting a kill level. Yeah. Well, that's the quite life spawn system for you. Yeah. There you go, Kreisa with the quad. It's just this is dead time now, in all honesty. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. I mean, four kings have just put in such a good performance in this map, and Zenitorium haven't been out of match. Do you think this might give uh, them confidence of picking this map, perhaps four kings in the future? I mean, this is. Uh, Close to humiliating defeat for XT, this kind of scoreline. Yeah, I mean, this is a really dominant performance. I wasn't aware of Zenitorium being weak at all on this map, so it's a real big positive for Four Kings to be winning by this amount. Good frag from DK. So XT, they lost their first match, they now lost their second. Both 2-1 scores, so they're not far off, but no cigar. I mean, they lost to a qualifier. I mean, you could expect perhaps to lose to Four Kings. I think they'll have been quite surprised to have lost their first game against Enemy Unknown. I mean, really, if you look at the, you know, the first map on this, this match, they fairly easily won on Dreadful Place and for the first what 10 minutes or so on DM14 they were by no means out of it, they were close. Definitely, I mean they still got a chance, top 3 qualify I believe. Really this defeat won't change much, most people expect 4 Kings to be one of the top few, top 3, probably they'd be favourites to top the group. So this kind of lost doesn't matter that much, especially actually getting a map isn't too bad, but that first week, the loss to enemy, the qualifiers, it suddenly put them in a very uh, pressured situation going forward. Yeah, I mean, really they'll have to pick up probably a couple of 2-0 wins in their next upcoming games to make up for that loss. Quad's going down. Dibby again on his point of view with that shaft. Does drop it. Bad timing to drop it as well. And the shaft is up on the spawn, but XT gonna take that. XT 
Oh, they're going to hit the century. Well, I guess they were at 99. And with two minutes plus to go. It'd be amazing if they didn't. And 70 frags behind, Laura. I mean, what do you what do you think it is, though? These are two EuroCup standard teams. They've played in EMS last few seasons as well. Their highest level. 70 frags, isn't that just too much? I mean, what's gone wrong here? Is it that there's too many maps to practice? I... Well, you know, they've, they've got quite two background, this uh, Zenitorium team, and it is possible that this is just not a map they're comfortable with, but then again, they had a choice of playing this or Intervention, so either they were just not happy with the EVA map, and this was the lesser of two evils as far as they were concerned, or they've just totally not turned up for this map. Do you think it should be a five map pool level? Oh absolutely, I think seven maps is absurd. Really. And I also really dislike this, you know, eliminate maps first system. Much rather see teams picking their strongest maps and you know, we see quality games rather than you know, teams settling for second choice maps. Well, I mean, can you imagine the legacy of a team like Ice Climbers if we weren't watching them play DM6 all those years? It gets to the point where you can't really have a best map and you can never show it to anyone. Yeah. You have to just be good all round, which is definitely a, a, a good thing, but... It was, yeah, I mean, like teams being strong all round, sure, but... It's very hard to be on seven different maps, with different styles, and with the, uh... I mean, the map pools used to be large, but it was... pick. Anyway, that rounds it off. 192 to 111, four kings take it. Dibby, outstanding score, 63 to 33 deaths. So, uh, tune in to TV1 right now, everybody. Right now. Good night.